today's morning rounds, two studies reveal how your diet can have a negative and long-lasting impact on your health in new ways. One study found a teenager's extremely poor eating habits caused him to effectively go blind. The other study found that people who drank at least two sugar-sweetened soft drinks a day had a higher risk of death from digestive diseases. And those who drank artificially sweetened drinks had an increased risk of death from diseases that affect the circulatory system. And both groups had an increased risk of death from Parkinson's disease. I mean, this is alarming. Registered dietitian Samantha Heller is here um, with when to worry and how to break bad habits. I mean, this is really surprising. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. You know, I, I don't think people realize that they're addicted when they're drinking soda after soda every day. How do you break that habit? You know, that's a really interesting question. I have had anecdotally many of my patients tell me they feel addicted to both non-nutritive sweeteners, artificial sweetened beverages, or sodas. I don't know if it's technically an addiction, but how do you stop that? I, I think by slowly cutting back, yeah. by if you drink five sodas a day, maybe have three, maybe replacing it if you like bubbles, because this, this study also looked at sugar-sweetened beverages, not just sodas, but if you like bubbles, I'd rather see a splash of 100% fruit juice, a splash with some seltzer, yeah. or drinking seltzer, or some herbal infusions. You could have chamomile tea, you can have green tea, you can have uh, berry tea, iced, or, you know, water, replace it slowly with things that are healthier for you. Why, are, so, why are sodas bad for your health? You know, I, I think we're looking at an association, not a cause and effect. And what we what we have seen through many studies is that uh, sugar-sweetened beverages, like sodas or sugar-sweetened drinks, increase the risk for obesity, type 2 diabetes, some of these other diseases. But also the artificial or non-nutritive sweetened beverages contribute to certain diseases as well. We are not sure why. Uh, these They both have citric and phosphoric acid. They can affect your dental health, erode your tooth enamel. They may be replacing healthier foods in your diet. And if you look at the people who are consuming them, maybe they have a less healthy lifestyle. So there's a lot of parameters that we need to look at here. Let's talk about this picky eating 17-year-old. I think this goes beyond picky eating. He was eating fries, white bread, processed ham, and sausage, also Pringles. We reached out to Pringles for comment, have not heard back. The kid went effectively blind. Yeah. What happened here? Well, that's a very rare scenario, and I think the take-home message here, I think there's two really important take-home messages. One is that a very poor diet that's high in processed foods, uh, junk food, fast food, may increase the risk of nutrient deficiencies or insufficiencies that increase the risk for chronic, possibly devastating diseases. Going blind is very rare. But the second point is, when you have a child who's this picky and this quote-unquote fussy that they mentioned in the abstract of this study, I would want to know, does he have sensory issues? Does he have cognitive or emotional issues? What is at the root of the problem here? Um, are the parents not paying attention? Are they trying to pay attention? Do they need special help to find out why this child isn't eating? How do you know when your child's uh, picky eating habits are actually leading to this kind of eating disorder? I think you have to be really careful and observational as you watch your children eat. They get picky. That's really normal, yeah. right? That, that all of a sudden, they only eat something pink. They only want a sandwich. They yeah. only want what their friends are eating. That's really normal. Yeah, so my son ate French want, fries for five years, yeah. I think. They want pizza it. for yeah. breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? Yeah. yeah. But introduce them to healthy foods on a regular basis. Have them take part in <laughs> helping you make those foods. Bring them to the grocery store with you. Be good role models. Always have something on the plate they like. And you may have to reintroduce a new food 15, 20 times, 30 times and be really patient before your kid tries it. Don't so, force it, though? I, I don't think forcing is ever a good idea. Yeah, no, I can, I can tell you that. I, <laughs> I, I, was, I went through that with my mom. Didn't work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the act Carrots, of rebellion. broccoli, why not? <laughs> make it a fun thing. Make it a family thing. Say, yeah. hey, let's go to the grocery store. Pick anything you want, any produce, any, any vegetable, any fruit, and we'll go home and we'll see what we want to do with it. We can try having it in different ways, in different yeah. ways of tasting it, roasting it, pureeing it, making a soup. So have it be a fun event. Sure broccoli for dinner coming yeah. right up. I'd eat that now. It's just mushrooms I won't touch. It's a psychological thing. Samantha Heller, thank you very much. My pleasure.